Okay, sorry. Is that better? No? No? Okay. It's on. Okay, better now? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So I need to have it even closer. So, better? Okay, thank you. So I will talk about the Lorentzian analog host of dimension and measure. So as an introduction and motivation, let's go to the Riemannian case. There a smooth Riemannian manifold has sectional curvature bounded below by K. If for all small enough triangles, you take two points P and Q in the sides and you compare the distance of P and Q with the distance of corresponding points on a triangle in model space, which is like a two dimensional spa remaining space of constant curvature. And if this inequality holds, then your space has sectional curvature bounded below by K. And similarly for curvature bounded above. And for a long time, it was thought that in the Lorentzian case, there is, is no such curvature bound. I, going back to Anderson Howard and Alexander Bishop, you can actually define such curvature bounds, but you have to be, be, treat the space-like and time-like cases separately. So you say a smooth same Riemann manifold has sectional curvature bound below by K, if space-like section curvatures are bounded below by K and time-like section curvatures are bounded above by K. And then Alexander Bishop showed that you can now actually characterize section, sectional curvature bounds for smooth same Riemann manifolds by triangle comparison again. But now triangle comparison works with the, what they call the sign distance. So this is um, the sign distance of P and Q. This is defined locally in convex neighborhood. It's actually the length of the connecting geodesic. So the sign distance is positive if they are space-like separated, negative if they are time-like related, and null if they are null related. And that completely characterizes sectional curvature bounds in, the, in this sense. And you can, of course, have also curvature bound, bounds from above. And in a metric case, this Toponogov theorem was actually the starting point of Alexandrov and cut case spaces because this sectional curvature bound condition makes complete sense for metric spaces. So, and here you have this triangle comparison for semi Riemannian, in particular Lorentzian manifolds, but this is not a metric in the sense of metric spaces anymore. So, so, so what to do? And that's uh, where our approach to synthetic Lorentzian geometry comes in. And Probably in this audience, I don't have to tell you why we want such an approach, but let me just recap and what to, we also heard in the previous talk, you want to handle also space times of low regularity. So we have a space time, but the metric is not smooth, it's not C2, so it's maybe even con just continuous. Maybe you also want to handle that there is no manifold structure or even having no metric. And this led us to what we call Lorentzian pre lamp spaces and Lorentzian lamp spaces. This is joint work with Mike Kunzinger. And there we were able to define time-like curvature bounds, analogs, analogs of sectional curvature bounds via triangle comparison as uh, indicated in the remaining case. But we were also able to apply this to inextinability questions and what products have a first synthetic singularity theorem and so on. And actually in this conference, we will hear some, some um, more topics which came up in this, in this approach. So what is the basic structure? What is the replacement of the metric space in the Lorentzian setting? So there are different uh, conventions, but this is how we did it. And of course it evolved a bit in the time, but the, the idea is, the, is the, the same, that you have a set X and you have a relation less or equal, it's just a pre-order on X. So it's transitive and reflexive. And you have less, less, it's a transitive relation contained in less or equal, meaning that if X is less, less Y, then X is less or equal Y. We want a metric on X to put some metric topology on X, but this is actually not that important. And this can be thought of as some kind of background metric. What is, in, what is important is tall. It's a function from X times X into zero infinity, which is lower semi-continuous respect to this metric topology. Then we call this a Lorentzian pre -length space if tau satisfies the reverse triangle inequality, so tau x z is greater or equal to tau x y plus tau y z for all triple of points which are causally related, tau of x y zero if they are not causally related, and it's positive if and only if they are time-like related. So in a sense, you don't 
need the time like relation you could define it like that but for us this is some kind of compatibility condition because for example for continuous space times or space times in general the less less relation is defined by saying that there is a future directed time like curve connecting these two points and this equality is then true in any smooth space time but for continuous space times it need not be true so especially if push up fails so this somehow is a compatibility condition but you could also um, not use this uh, less less relation just use tau and tau is called the time separation function and a first example is of course a smooth space time where the usual time separation function is just taking the supremum of all g lengths of future directed causal curves going from p to q or zero if, if there is no causal curve connecting them but you can also view finite directed graphs as lorentzian pre-length spaces and then you can also define causal curves so a causal curve is then just a, a non-constant curve which preserves the, the lesser equal relation so if s is less than equal to t is the parameter then gamma of s is less equal than gamma t and for us the curves are always Lipschitz, local Lipschitz continuous respect to this metric then you can define the length as Penrose defines length for, for curves you just sum up the, the time separation of points on the curve and you take the uh, the infimum then you can, def def can define causality conditions like global hyperbolicity, strong causality as for space times. And you can say what it means that tau is intrinsic. And then this leads to the notion of Lorentzian length space, similar to the metric case, that if tau is actually then given as the supremum of the tau lengths of connecting curves, then it's called intrinsic. And so now we have this analog of the metric space, but in metric spaces, you also have host of measures and host of dimension. And this pops up re, um, a lot in, in metric measure geometry. So what is the analog of host of dimension and host of measure in this setting? So you take a, uh, a causal diamond, Jxy. So this is J plus of X intersected J minus of Y. So these are all points set, which are in the causal future of X in the causal past of Y. And you assign this causal diamond a content but just taking the time separation to the power n, where n is a dimensional parameter in zero infinity, and multiplying with some dimensional constant, gamma n here. And this constant is chosen in such a way that if n is an integer greater or equal than two, then this content is actually the volume of the causal diamond in n dimensional Minkowski space time, which has the same time separation. And then you can define a family of outer measures by just taking a set A and covering the set A with causal diamonds, which have small diameter, less equal than delta. And of course, this diameter depends on the chosen background metric, but it only depends on that in a weak way, because you just need to know what smallness means for this set. And then you sum up this, uh, this contents here, take the infimum, you get an outer measure. And if you take delta to zero, you get a real Borel measure, which we call n-dimensional Lorentzian measure. And this is the analog of the Hausdorff measure in, in, in the setting of Lorentzian pre-length spaces. And then of course you can define the synthetic dimension. So it's just then the infimum over all the n such that the n-dimensional Lorentzian measure of A is finite. And if you have a little bit of more connection between the, the time separation and the metric, then you can actually show that this behaves the same way as the Hausdorff measure. So you see that if tau is little o of one, so tau of xy goes to zero as dxy goes to zero, then n is the synthetic dimension of a if and only if for small k less than n and capital K larger than a, you have that the little k um, measure of a is infinite and the large k measure of a is, is zero. And so you have that the synthetic dimension of a is also the, uh, the supremum over all the n such that the n dimension Lorentzian measure of a is infinite. And these measures, they are sensitive to the causal structure and this is exactly what we want. So for example, null curves are zero dimensional. So even though they are Lipschitz curves, so the image has host of, host of dimension one, they have, host of, uh, they have Lorentzian dimensions, dimension zero. So if you have a future directed null curve, so meaning to every point on the curve is causal related, but not time like related. Then, in, and the, sp uh, the space is strongly causal. And then the, the, the synthetic dimension of the image is zero. Another thing you have is that actually, if you have a future directed causal curve, then the one dimensional Lorentzian measure of the image is bounded above by its length. 
And if you know that all causal diamonds are closed, which is the case if the space is globally hyperbolic, then actually the one dimensional Lorentzian measure is the length of the curve. Also that also countable sets are zero dimensional and measured by the cardinality. So the zero dimensional Lorentzian measure is just a counting measure. So if X is strongly causal, so to be, to be precise, if X is strongly causal and N is a two dimensional parameter. And additionally, if N is positive, you assume that you have enough points which are null related. So for every point every, in every neighborhood of the point, you can find two points X plus Y that are causally related to X, but not time-like related. So they're just null related. Yeah. So does that mean that the dimension of the boundary of the diamond is zero? Uh, yes. Yeah. If the boundary is just a null curve, yes. Yeah. So it's not, it's not no longer the case that the dimension of the boundary is one less than the dimension of the Exactly, yes. Oh. Yeah. And we will see that in Minkowski space, yeah. Mm -hmm. A similar thing, yeah. Then the n-dimensional, if A is countable, then the n-dimensional measure of A is zero. And if it's arbitrary that the zero dimension is just the cardinality of A, so this is the counting measure. And again, to see this sensitivity on the causal, causal structure, we look at uh, subspaces of Minkowski spacetime. So if you take a subspace which has algebraic dimension K and is space-like, then the Lorentzian measure is just the positive multiple of the Hausdorff measure on this subspace. But for example, linear null hypersurface have geometric co-dimension two, not one. And to be precise, we have the following. If you have a null subspace, which has algebraic dimension K, which is not N, N is greater or equal than two, then the synthetic dimension of S is K minus one. And the Lorentzian measure splits as follows. You write S as a space-like subspace R times the span of, of nu, where nu is a null vector then the k dimensional k minus one dimensional measure splits as a multiple of the Hausdorff measure times the counting measure on on this if you write it uh, if you split it like like this and of course this this causal this sensitivity or the causal structure is something we, we want and so so <clears throat> we have this family of measures and um Space times are Lorentzian brillant spaces. So what happens, what, how, how does it compare to the volume measure? And actually we can show that not just for smooth space times, but also for continuous space time where the causal structure is well behaved. So they are strongly causal and causally plane, meaning that there is no causal bubbling of crucial ground. Then the, the n-dimensional Lorentzian measure where n is the uh, topological dimension of the manifold M, this is actually the volume measure. And then, of course, the synthetic dimension is n. And this uses an appropriate version or refined version of the cylindrical neighborhoods of crucial grant and then some machinery of Federer. And crucially, it uses something, it's a kind of doubling property of causal diamonds and the doubling property of the volume measure for continuous space times. And I will explain that in a bit here. So here's the, um, the this refined cylindrical neighborhoods. The W is a cylindrical neighborhood. And it can be chosen in such a way that the first coordinate vector is uniformly time-like on this neighborhood. Then you have a smaller neighborhood, W prime, which is causally convex in W, which has the following property. If you take two points, P and Q, which have the same space component and just differ by the time component, and you go up, uh, go down from P, by a factor lambda times s minus t, the time difference, you go from p, you go, so here is um, the neighborhood, say you're, you're here, then you go down along this what we call doubling axis, which is just dt axis, and from q you go up this same factor, lambda times the time difference, then p hat and q hat are still in, in the neighborhood. So let's zoom in on w prime. Then we also have to can construct these neighborhoods in the following way that they have the property that if P is time like related to Q, again, they just differ by the time component. So P and Q is here. And you have another such diamond where the time difference of the second one is bounded above two times the time difference of the first one and they intersect. Then if you 
if you do the doubling of the PQ diamond, then it contains the, the UV diamond. So you double here, you still P hat and Q hat is still in W. You take this diamond, then this diamond contains the other one. So this is similar to if two balls intersect, you know, you can make it larger and, and then it contains the other one. And finally, you can make these neighborhoods arbitrarily small and chosen in such a way that they are inside a globally hyperbolic neighborhood. And then in such a cylindrical neighborhood, the volume measure. So if you take the double diamond in this, in this neighborhood, then actually this is the volume of this diamond is bounded above by the volume of, this, of the original diamond by some constant, which just depends on, on the neighborhood and not on the points. So we are led to this definition that we call a Borel measure, locally causally doubling. If for all cylindrical neighborhoods, there exists a, a constant where for all P, which just differ by the time component, the measure of this double diamond is bounded above by L times the measure of the original diamond. And the diamond has positive measure if the points are time lag related and the measure of the whole um, neighborhood is finite. And then you can actually bound this, if you have something like this, then you can bound the synthetic dimension by the one plus two lambda log of this doubling constant. This is very similar to the, to the metric case. But for us now, this everything plays in, in, inside this uh, continuous space times because we need these coordinates to define the doubling. And this will be one of the open problems, how to define the doubling in a general Lorentzian pre length space and just um, and let me compare this now to, to synthetic time like Ritchie curvature bounds as introduced by Cavaletti Mundino. They, had the con they, had they, have like, um, they will talk about this, but I will just um, use the Bishop Gromov, the time like Bishop Gromov inequality they have. So they look at this sub level sets of tau and intersect with some set compact set E, which is star, tau star shaped. So all the maximal causal curves from X into the future of x uh, lie in E, uh, in, in, in E. So you have some compact subsets of the hyperbola. Then they show that if you have uh, this time like Ricci curvature bound, you have a, a Bishop Gromov inequality, and from that they derive a doubling of these sets ER. And it seems that this doesn't imply doubling for causal diamonds, even if you have a, a, a continuous space time. However, what, what we still can get is that if a space has this time like this weak time like Ricci curvature dimension condition, then the synthetic dimension, so and you're on a causally plane sp continuous space time, then the synthetic dimension is bounded above by this n dimension, this parameter n in the TCD condition. So this is some kind of compatibility check. And <clears throat> And just let me conclude with some outlook. So we have we looked at the, uh, the measures in, in Minkowski space time, and it should be easy to transfer that to, to smooth space time, so semi remaining and submanifolds. And I also already mentioned how to define doubling of causal diamonds in general without using this kind of coordinates. We have some ideas, but so far we, we don't have anything definite. Then you can now look at this time like Ritchie curvature bounds with respect to this, these measures, which uh, might be useful. And then you can also apply this to singularity theorems by just getting measures on, on hypersurfaces, for example, like in the Hawking theorem. And then there is this approach by, by Christina Somani and Carlos Vega, which introduced a null distance, which gives you a real distance if you have a nice enough time function on your space time. And so this gives you a metric. So you can ask, okay, do you then for respect to this metric, you get house of measures. How do they compare to these measures? Okay, th thank you very much. And here are some uh, references.